Hi everybody, my name is Max Maker and Metabu sent me this brand new push mower which is perfectly fine, it cuts the grass, it mulches the leaves, you can also pick it up into a basket, but in this video I want to make it remote controlled because I think it would be fun and I think it will also be useful. I'm going to use this especially in the autumn to pick up all these leaves because raking them on a pile and then putting them in a the trash bag is not as easy as just going over it with a lawnmower, especially if it's remote controlled. This is a great lawnmower just the way it is, but I still want to automate it, even if it's just for fun. I had this idea when I was a little kid and now I'm finally doing it. Uh, so I bought these two wheelchair motors. Uh, they have a lot of torque, they're quite slow because they're geared and they have a long shaft so I can attach uh, the wheels to them directly without having to need any more gearbox or bearings or so on. And for the wheels, I'm using these wheelbarrow wheels because they have the bigger diameter. Uh, and they're also filled with air so I can adjust the tire pressure to get good grip and with the certain diameter we get a good speed on this one because I don't want it to be too slow. Um, so the next thing will be how to attach these wheels to here and also to keep this motion right here because as you can see it's moving in parallel that's because this shaft right here is moving up and down and the one here at the back. There are different steering methods for robots. This is the easiest one, it's skid steering with two motors, but the problem is it skids. And when it skids, it would destroy the lawn, just like a tank would tear up a field if it drives over it. Uh, but there's an easy fix for that if you add casters at the front. With casters, you're very maneuverable and you don't have any skidding anymore. And that is great for traction, but also for maneuverability. So these are like a zero turn mower. And that's what I'm going with here. And these things, they have to be absolutely parallel. If you tilt them, um, they don't steer anymore. So that will be a challenge right now to get this to move in a parallel fashion with this kind of wheel. So the next step is to remove all of the parts that we don't need anymore. I think I can reuse these wheels. They are really nice, but we definitely don't need the controls here at the top anymore. Uh, and inside this little box, there's the switch that activates the motor. And we're going to connect this to an Arduino later so we can remote control it with a standard RC remote. This robot will not be autonomous, but I think I can add some kind of an autopilot later to follow waypaths. I really like this mechanism because I think it's quite clever. It, it's simple, it works very well, this handle is super nice. And I think it would be very convenient to have the height adjustment on the remote control to change the mowing height on the fly. So to keep that feature, I built this frame around it to see if I could use that as an attachment point for the motors and the front wheels. And I don't think I'd need this this or this so I could take it off. The only thing that's then not attached is this flap, but I can reattach it later, I think. These bolts gave me a ton of resistance. I couldn't take them off with an Allen wrench, so I extended it without success. Then I got an impact driver for the other bolt, which didn't work. And after that, I got my huge impact driver that I used to undo my car tires. Normally this one can shear 10 mm bolts just by twisting them, but not in this case. So I had to grind off the heads and the nuts were lost inside. This would probably be a great project for a lawnmower that you find at the curb, but I wanted a battery powered one to keep the noise down. That way it's also much easier to start and stop it with the Arduino. I found a problem. This distance does not stay constant. Because this arm is longer than this arm. So I need to rebuild these. And they're also sticking out quite far, so I'm going to make them a bit shorter. The linkage was held on with some retaining bolts and then I could take the whole thing off and use it as inspiration for the new linkage. Uh, the new one will be very similar, just the dimensions will be a little bit different. And I'm using this flat bar for the sides and I drill them all at the same time to make sure the distances between the pivot points are exactly the same. I used some threaded rod for the bar because I have a nice stock of different threaded rod size so I always have the right diameter at hand, which isn't the case with steel rods. I bought a lot of steel tubing recently, just to keep on stock in the workshop it's always handy to have this stuff around, uh, because working with steel I find is much easier than working with aluminium extrusions. So this is the linkage and it works quite nicely, but to connect the two sides together I am using aluminium profiles. And the reason for that is that you can easily tap the ends of them and then make 90 degree uh, connections. Because I need to be able to take them apart again, uh, otherwise if I would weld all of this together I could never separate the linkage anymore uh, from the frame at the top. And this looks very promising. The frame should stay stable and only the deck should move up and down. So this is already a nice basis and now I can work on the front wheels. I'm adding the spreader bar to move them a little bit to the sides to make sure they don't collide with the deck. And I like to add threads whenever I can instead of using nuts. And that makes assembly and troubleshooting much easier since you just have to turn the screw and not hold the nut as well. 
In this case I welded the nut to the thin tubing, uh, but for smaller diameters you can also just thread the tubing directly or use rivet nuts to make a really nice connection. I think this was a little bit too close so I cut a bigger spreader bar and I'm using my bandsaw for that because the bandsaw doesn't make a lot of dust, it's just some fine particles that don't get into your lungs easily. Alright, we've got the front wheels. Before I attach the back ones, first I want to make sure that this motion gets locked in because right now it's difficult to maneuver this around because it always drops down. And to actuate that I've got this thing. Uh, it runs on 20 volts and it just pushes in and out and I'm going to add that somewhere here. So this is exactly what I mean. Just add some threads to the steel. Uh, that's always a good connection and easy to assemble. And here at the top of this lever I'm using a rivet nut. Uh, it's a rivet nut setup from Jazipa. It works really well and it's very easy to make nice threads even in uh, thin material. It was important to install this height adjusting motor now because then I can lower and raise the deck easily without having to hold it with my hands uh, and find out if the front wheels are in the right location or not. Unfortunately these wheels don't work properly. Um, one thing is this motion. It's too loose and that makes it bind instead of swivel. And the other thing is um, that these wheels themselves are pretty loose on the screw. Uh, if I tighten the screw anymore it wiggles even more. It doesn't work. Luckily I've got these wheels left over. These are from a forklift and these have really big bearings in comparison. So I'm going to use these and rebuild this completely. So I built some brand new casters and this time I had steel on both sides of the wheel uh, to support them better. And for the swivel mount I used M16 bolts that fit perfectly in the standoffs that I had left over. That was very handy because I don't have a lathe that is strong enough to drill holes in this size. I welded them to the spreader bar and I think you can agree that my welds are getting much better. I've got this axle shaft that fits perfectly but these are hardened. Uh, because these are made for precision machines uh, and it's very hard to drill a hole in here. So to soften this up, I'm heating them up until they're glowing red and then I let them cool down slowly. So hopefully the hardness will be gone after that. That didn't work at all, but I found out that wheelbarrow axles have the perfect dimensions for this. When there's a wheel attached here, it wants to twist this bar, as I noticed when I just had this cheap clamp on. Um, so I'm welding on this support to this bar and then I can screw this to this. So later on I can still remove this, uh, but I have a really solid connection to the rest of the frame. I only tacked the pieces together while they were attached to get the perfect geometry and then I welded the joints completely. Remember, I need to be able to take the spreader bar off, otherwise I cannot disassemble the whole frame. So now we have a nice and smooth motion and I think this will work out great. Now that the front part is sorted, it's time to work on the back wheels and I've removed the inside bearings, uh, we don't need them, and I printed these little adapters and they go on top of our motors. And the nice thing is I don't have to machine any steel, it's just 3D printed. So I will put the wheel just about here, that will make the whole lawn more wider than it was before and I cannot mow all the way to the edge. But that's a sacrifice I have to make because I want to use the basket. If I put the wheels here, it would be narrower, that would be nice, but I can't use the basket anymore. And that's really important to pick up the leaves in autumn. So now I need to make some kind of spacer to attach this motor to here. You probably have seen this trick before. I certainly learned it from YouTube. Uh, and that's why I love watching YouTube videos, because I learn so much, I see how other people do it. And ultimately I get better at making stuff. This is a 10 millimeter steel plate. Uh, and it's really nice to get a good connection to the wheels, get some good material to add some threads to it. And I just tacked everything and then I welded everything solid and now I can attach the wheels and have a really good connection because it's very likely you have to take these wheels on and off a couple of times. Here in the middle I'm adding a cross brace because the cross brace at the back, the silver one, has to go. And I made this removable so that's why I'm using this bolt pattern. And I clamped everything on so I can weld it in place and then I can take it off again and still be able to deassemble the whole frame. So now it's time for painting. First I primed everything just roughly so the black paint has a good chance of sticking to the frame and will last a long time. I take health and safety very seriously and whenever I create fine particles like here I always wear a respirator or preferably I do it outside if the weather is fine uh, because you can see after some time how dirty your filters get and that stuff would have ended up in your lungs so it's really important to, to protect your lungs. Uh, long term if you do stuff in a workshop you really should invest in a good respirator. 
Those that are new to this channel probably don't know that I'm building a brand new workshop this year and I'm documenting the whole build process. So please subscribe and you get to see how I'm building my new workshop. It's going to be much bigger than the current one and it will have a nice roof overhang in front of the garage door. And that way I can work outside, uh, keep all the dust and the dirt outside and still be protected from the rain. So some of those videos are already out and I'm documenting the whole thing from the groundwork to the concrete to the steel building at the end. Uh, so please subscribe and you get to see how we're building the workshop. But back to the lawnmower, I quickly hooked up the motors to a battery pack to see how it looks when they're spinning and I think it's very promising. Now it's time to add all of the electronics. I designed this box in CAD and first I thought I could make it out of steel but then I decided no I'd rather 3D print this. That way I can match the aesthetics of the lawnmower and it will look much better at the end. Uh, if I made this out of steel I would probably just end up with a standard box and it wouldn't be as nice as this is. Next I could add all of the electronics and I'm screwing everything to little wooden blocks and they get glued and screwed to some plywood pieces. Nice thing about the plywood is it's easy to arrange the electronics and you cannot get a short because it's not conducting of course. And here I'm adding a little spacer, a little standoff, so I can add some PCBs on both sides to save some space. This is an Arduino Mega, it's a little microprocessor and that will be the brain of the whole lawnmower. Inside of the lid I'm adding an indicator light to see if the power is on or off and the emergency switch is also a on and off button. The whole lid is held on by magnets and uh, the magnets get glued into the lid and the electronics box is receiving some screws and that way the magnets have some metal to hold on to. And this holds on really well, you can shake it and the lid doesn't fall off. I could have 3D printed some hinges, but designing them on CAD is very time consuming. This is a RC receiver and I glued it to this little standoff that I 3D printed and that gets glued to the Arduino Mega. So that way the leads are very short from the receiver to the Arduino. So the batteries go in here. These are connected in parallel, so we are drawing both batteries at the same time. Uh, these are the motor controllers. These are BTS 7960s, two of them. They work really well and they get uh, power by PWM, so a pulse width modulation. And the cool thing is you can slowly raise up the current on the motors so they ramp up slowly. They don't just go full throttle straight away. And you can control that with an Arduino. The Arduino Mega we're using on this uh, because there's uh, more pins basically. Here on top is the RC receiver that gets connected from these pins down to the Arduino. I have to figure that still out yet. And on the other underside, we have a voltage regulator here that gives us uh, about, I think, 12 volts for the Arduino is what we're using. And also for this thing. And we have a relay board. This needs 5 volts to actuate these relays. And for that, we're getting a second one of these just for 5 volts. And we're putting it right on here. I added all the cables off camera because I really needed to concentrate to get everything correct. I built this little soldering caddy a few years ago and that really helped during the process. After that I had a nice electronics box that I could screw to the frame with everything inside and I could start with the programming which turned out to be much more difficult than I anticipated. I wanted to control both motors just using one stick and to use acceleration and it turned out that it is not as straightforward as it sounds. The final building step was to add these two brackets so I can reattach the basket again because I really want to pick up some leaves in autumn. We have a whole lot of trees around and having a basket is very nice for that. And there's the completed RC lawnmower. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It looks a little bit like a spider and I'm super excited to try it out. So let's go into the garden and give it a spin. This was in March so the grass wasn't really growing yet but I wanted to give it a try anyway. So you can go forwards and reverse and you can turn on the spot and then one wheel goes forward while the other one is in reverse. But if you go forward and then you turn, both wheels turn in the same direction and programming that was really difficult. So one goes a little bit slower than the other um, and that way you do a wide turn. So the wheels behave completely differently depending on the speed. It also has acceleration which adds to the complexity but it's also very convenient. Uh, even if you jam the throttle all the way forward it doesn't jerk. That means less strain on the gears and no slipping wheels. And when you brake it also deaccelerates smoothly but a lot faster than it accelerates. And if you lose signal with the remote it stops completely. So it's quite a complex piece of code um, and if you want to check it out um, it's based on Arduino so there's a link in the video description. The wheels also work flawlessly and it doesn't build up any mud because of this very tight tolerance here. That's an unattended feature but it's really nice. 
It also has no issues cutting through this very thick grass. Here on the side of the building, I don't have an automatic lawnmower set up that mows the lawn every day, so I let it grow tall sometimes. And it has no issues going through this, it only consumes a little bit more battery. Now, I could set up an automatic lawnmower here, I'd probably do it in the future, but for right now this is really fun to use uh, and it saves me a lot of effort uh, because it's also moving faster than if I would push this by hand. A short wheelbase is important to make it turn on the spot. The further the front wheels are away, the harder it is for the back wheels to make it spin. And to improve this concept further, it would be great to have two mowing decks side by side. That way it could mow all the way to the edges. There's this one tree in my garden that produces these super rubbery leaves all summer long and they don't degrade. It's almost like banana peels. It's difficult to pick them up, but with the basket attached it's super easy. It just picks them up and then I can throw them in the trash. So this robot is great for those special tasks, but overall my autonomous lawnmower still does most of the work in the garden. It mows every morning for 3 hours and that way you get a perfectly uniform and very thick lawn. So if you want a perfect lawn, you really need an automatic lawnmower, uh, not one that's just remote controlled. But this autonomous lawnmower also has its drawbacks. Uh, my model broke three times within the first two years of owning it and even though it cost a fortune, getting this covered under warranty was really difficult and they really didn't want to pay for the repair. So I wasn't happy about the service, even though when it works, it works really nicely. Anyway, I built this new one and I think this will serve me nicely, especially for the leaves. Uh, and if you want to build something like this yourself, you can check out the code in the video description. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and like the video and share it with your friends. That really helps out a lot. And since I'm building the new workshop, there are a lot more videos in the pipeline. So if you subscribe, you don't miss out on those. Thanks for watching everybody. My name is Max Maker and I make all kinds of stuff.